So the first fundamental rule to looking amazing every time you match a shirt with a sweater is to know your options. Now, when it comes to sweaters, two main types, you've got the heavy, bulky, more casual sweaters, and then you've got the lightweight, more delicate weaves that in general are geared more towards layering. Now, with either type, you could always layer with a shirt. That being said, it's going to be the lighter weight weaves that are going to be more conducive to layering with collared shirts. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. Let's first talk about all the different sweater types. First up, we've got the crew neck, and this can be matched with any type of shirt. But if you want to dress it up, it will work with a collared shirt. Next up, we've got the V-neck. And yes, you can pair it with a t-shirt, but I think it looks best when paired with a collared shirt. This is really where the collar gets to stand out when we get to bring in the layers, especially if you bring in a necktie. Next up, we've got the turtleneck. And as the name implies, the neck, that collar is all about the sweater. And it may sound obvious, but I'm going to say it, guys, never wear a collar shirt with a turtleneck. Next up, we have the cardigan. Here, I am definitely going to recommend that you wear a button-down shirt with a strong collar, neckties, but if you choose to skip it, then yeah, the combination still is fine without it. Now, what about the quarter sweater? This is going to be a pullover sweater that opens up in the front. You're going to see this with a zipper. You're going to see it with buttons. With zippers, I think that this looks great. It's a more casual look with a collared shirt and a necktie, but yeah, you could also wear this with a t-shirt. The button quarter sweater, well, it really depends on the casual of the sweater. If it's ultra casual, wear it with a t-shirt, maybe a Henley. If not, if it's a little bit dressier, the buttons are smaller, it's made from a lightweight material, yeah, you could pair this with a dress shirt. Next up, we've got the shawl collar sweater, a beautiful addition to your wardrobe. Guys, I like to let the collar shine, so I'm going to recommend wearing it without a dress shirt collar, but if you decide to do that, you can pull it off with a collar. But yeah, for me, I think this looks best when you let that shawl collar shine. And last but not least, the sweater jacket. Yeah, you better believe wear it with a collar. Now, we started this video off by zipping through all the different styles of sweaters, but what about your options when it comes to shirts? Now, the first shirt is the basic undershirt, and you're going to wear this if you don't plan to take the sweater off. If you just want to wear something underneath the sweater to protect it from sweat. But in general, if the shirt is going to be seen, I recommend you upgrade to a t-shirt. And the difference being a t-shirt is usually made from a heavier material. It's going to have a nicer neck, and they come in a variety of colors. Now, earlier in the video, I mentioned the Henley. The Henley is a classic shirt design that has buttons going down the front with no collar. I think they're a little bit dressier and in some ways a little bit more stylish than a regular t-shirt, especially if you go with a long sleeve Henley and they make for great layering pieces, especially if you're wearing a casual sweater that's going to be open in the front. And that takes us right to polos, which I'm not going to recommend for layering in most situations because most polos out there just have weak collars. But I get it. A lot of you guys like polos because they're short sleeve. They're incredibly comfortable. Well, if that is the case, gents, and you want to be able to layer and look good, check out Collars & Co., the sponsor of today's video. Awesome company. I've been working with them coming in on a year. I love their shirts so much. Yeah, right here, as you can see, I wore them to the baptism of my youngest daughter. And these shirts may look like polo shirts, but they're not. There's something more. It's all about the collar, it's all about that front placket. But what I love about this is that you can layer with any type of sweater that you would layer with a dress shirt. I've worn this with a suit. You can dress these shirts up. You can dress them down. They are incredibly versatile. And yeah, this is a new invention. These guys were on Shark Tank. In fact, Mark Cuban invested a million dollars in this company and has been spotted wearing these shirts all over the place. In addition to having an amazing collar that looks great when you layer, let's talk about the fabric. The drape is beautiful. If you're traveling, you can throw these in and out of the suitcase. You don't have to worry about ironing. They've got a four-way stretch and they're moisture wicking. Basically, what that means is you can wear them close to the body, you can sweat, and they are going to take care of that. They're also going to feel comfortable all day. I know this because I wear them. They're incredibly lightweight, and they look good. And gents, when you go over to their website, talk about options. If you're looking for a cutaway collar, if you're looking for a semi-spread, if you want an English spread, or if you want an Oxford button-down collar, guess what? They've got you covered. And check out all the colors. Of course, they've got the basics. They've got the whites. They've got light blue. They've got the dark blue. Check out their patterns. I love how they use the small repeating patterns. Tons of options. Get the look of a dress shirt without having to wear a dress shirt. Incredibly comfortable. You can pair these with a tie. You can layer them. Check out Collars & Co, guys. Go to collarsandco.com slash RMRS and use code RMRS to get the best deal on the web. Next up, let's talk about the dress shirt and the casual button-up. Now, these are actually different shirts. Even though they may look very similar, they've got a very similar build, but a dress shirt is actually made to be worn 
under a jacket. And if we were to stick with the old school definition, dress shirts are always going to be white, but a lot has changed in the last hundred years. We've seen now dress shirts in a wide variety of colors. Dress shirts in general, though, are going to be a little bit dressier, more formal. Button downs are going to come in a wide variety of different fabrics patterns. Both of these you can actually layer with a sweater. But do understand there is a difference. A button down is always going to be a bit more casual. If you want to really dress up the look, then look for a proper dress shirt. Now, gents, if you've ever paired a shirt and sweater combination, looked at yourself in the mirror and said, damn, I look good. Do me a favor and smash the like button. Seriously, guys, engaging with these videos helps them reach more men. And this video, I think, is going to be really useful to a lot of guys. Now, at this point, you may be asking the perfectly legitimate question, why? Why do you even need to pair a shirt with a sweater? Can you just simply wear a sweater by itself? The first reason, which I mentioned earlier, is straight up protection. You don't want to be having to wash your sweater after every wear. By wearing a shirt underneath, you protect your sweater from the sweat, from the oil, from the grime that naturally comes off your body throughout the day. This enables you to wear a sweater multiple times before you have to wash it. Next up, let's talk about skin irritation. How many times have you heard or have you worn a sweater that, let's just say, is not comfortable on the skin? It's itchy. Well, to get specific, most virgin wool is going to have a thickness of between 37 and 40 micrometers. Now, human sensitivity to fibers is anything above 25 micrometers. So, thick wool fibers being above that are going to irritate most people's skin. But what about merino wool? What about cashmere? Those on average are only 16 to 20 micrometers. So, guess what? They fall below that threshold and you don't even notice them. They just feel luxurious. They feel nice and soft. Now, the reality is most wool out there, if it hasn't been treated, is that thicker type coming from a breed of sheep that was, yeah, grew up in a very harsh climate and those fibers needed to be thicker to protect it. Merino wool on the other hand, comes from a breed of sheep that actually is from North Africa. And as the climate you know, would indicate, they didn't need as much protection. That's why the fibers were thinner and that type of fiber was sought after. And especially, you know, maybe with scarves, gloves, any type of accessory that's smaller that you're going to keep close to the body and you want, don't want to have irritating you. The point, men have been layering for hundreds of years because it's just more comfortable than wearing wool right up next to the skin. Now, the next rule to styling a shirt and sweater and looking amazing is to get the fit right. I've talked about how fit is king. Well, guess what? It's incredibly important when you're pairing two items together, they're going to be right next to each other for hours at a time. Now, you may be wondering what's more important, the fit of your dress shirt or the fit of the sweater? The answer is the sweater by far because there are hacks that you can actually, this one right here. So, if you have a dress shirt that is too large, okay, put it on, tuck it in, do the best you can, and then I want you to put a t-shirt over this. This is going to be a well-fitted t-shirt. Try it at home, but this right here is going to fix that bulky dress shirt. It's going to keep all the fabric in and it's going to look good just as long as, yeah, you don't have to take that sweater off. But in general, you want your shirt to fit. So, whenever you have a shirt, if you're going to keep a shirt, if you're buying a shirt, make sure first up it fits you in the shoulder points. Then you want right here fits you in the chest. This graphic right here breaks it out. You want to make sure the sleeve length. And by the way, you can take your shirts to a tailor. They can adjust them, even t-shirts, but I wouldn't, I just recommend buying the right size t-shirt. But yeah, starting with a good fit on the shirt, yeah, this is how we want to play the game. Now, when it comes to sweaters, the fit is a little bit more forgiving because you've got an elastic. You've got a stretch material in here. And I do recommend that you want the sweater to fit you well. You don't want it oversized. You don't want it really bulky. You know, you can take it to a knitter and they can actually, on the inside of the sweater, put little darts, especially on the sides, to be able to bring in an especially bulky sweater. But in general, you want to try to buy the sweater fitting well off the rack. Now, one area in particular I want to talk about is going to be the length of the sleeves on the shirt and the sweater. If you're going to wear a dress shirt and you want to be able to show the sleeve, I think a quarter to three quarters of an inch is perfect. Anything more, all of a sudden it starts making that shirt either look too long, makes the sweater look too short. And if you don't show it at all, not a big deal. You know, again, some people just like this look. And I talked about it earlier, but I'm going to hit on it again the collar. In general, most polos have very soft collars. That's why I'm not recommending most polos. Guys, as you know, Collars & Co. sponsor. I'm not going to get into it again, but I just love the fact that you want any shirt that you're going to wear a collar with for it to be strong. So, pay attention to the front placket. Pay attention to the collar. Make sure it's got bones or it's got a nice structure on it. And the bones are basically collar stays, but you want a collar that's going to stick up and stay there. Now, when it comes to matching patterns, remember the acronym KISS. 
keep it simple, silly. In general, we have three items that we are looking to match with this combination. You have the sweater, you have the shirt, and in some cases, you are wearing a necktie. When it comes to the sweater, I really like versatile sweaters. I like the idea of the interchangeable wardrobe. So I go with solids for the vast majority of my sweaters. These are pieces that are oftentimes very similar in color to the jackets in my wardrobe, my sports jackets, my blazer jackets. And the reason being is I know that they're going to work with the majority of my shirts. I know they're going to work with the majority of my trousers. Now, of course, you can go out there and get a sweater that's a bright color that has an interesting pattern that really stands out. But understand it's going to be harder to mix and match. In general, though, going with a solid sweater enables you to have a little bit more fun with the shirts. But you can also go the opposite approach. If you want to simply go with a solid shirt, you can go with a little bit more fun in the sweater. Or if you're relatively boring, like myself, then you can just simply go with simple patterns on either one. I mostly mix it up in the shirts. And the reason being is shirts are less expensive. Sweaters sometimes cost two to three times more than the average shirt. So in that case, I'm having a little bit more fun with changing up the colors, the patterns. You're also not showing as much of the shirt whenever you're layering it. So I think that, that pattern just pops a bit more and it allows and it draws attention to the face. So with your sweaters, you're keeping it solid, you're keeping it simple. Shirts, you're having a little bit more fun. And really, necktie, this is really where you can bring in the bright colors. You can bring in a wide variety of patterns from paisleys to polka dots to small repeating patterns. This is where you're really just bringing in the color. Again, if you think about a tie tight, it's pointing right at the face. A great way if you're going to be giving a presentation, if you're going to be talking to a group, to keep people, yeah, focused in on, yeah, the moneymaker, right? Now, can you reverse that? Can you go with a solid tie, a little bit of pattern in the shirt, and a bright sweater? Of course you can, but in general, it's a higher risk, and you're probably going to be spending a bit more money with an outfit that won't be as versatile, and you will only be able to wear once, because if you wear it even twice in a year, people are going to say, hey, I remember him wearing this. At this point, let's do some quick FAQs. First up, do you need to tuck in your shirt? do you need to tuck in your sweater? So my thoughts, if you're layering a shirt with a sweater, I always tuck it in, even if it's a t-shirt. I know some people like this disheveled, half tuck, you know, that you can see the tails. I just, yeah, really don't like the look. As for tucking in sweaters, the answer is no. I don't really know of any situation in which you would tuck in a sweater. They should end right at about the belt area, and I find that you can fold them under, but yeah, let's not be tucking them in. I don't know. Does anyone disagree? If so, let me know in the comments, and I'd like to hear why. Now, what about multiple sweaters, multiple shirts? Can you layer this way? You can, but I'm not going to recommend it, except in the shirts. An undershirt, which I happen to have on with my collars and co right here. You can wear this with a dress shirt, but I think undershirts are great just simply to protect my more expensive pieces of clothing that I don't want to have to wash again after every use. I do wash my undershirts after every wear, but most of my other pieces of clothing, I can get lots of wears out of. Multiple sweaters. Got to be careful here. I have seen people be able to pull off, you know, a great looking sweater jacket with a turtleneck, different weights, colors, materials, but it's hard. I would recommend one sweater at a time. Wearing a sweater over a shirt, does it bring down the level of the formality? And we're talking specifically with dress shirts. The answer is yes, but it doesn't really matter because from a functional perspective, it's about keeping warm. Most of the time when we're pulling off this combination, it's because, yeah, it's cold outside. We want to stay warm. But I'm assuming that you're wearing a sweater that fits with the dress shirt. But if it's a casual sweater, I had a friend the other day who's wearing this one, Cream of the Crop. It had Macho Man Randy Savage on it. In that case, that's going to bring down the formality. And I, I don't think that it's a great combination to wear with a dress shirt if you're going to be wearing, you know, normally a sport jacket and dress shirt at work. And for the record, that was an amazing sweater that Matt wore and it got him compliments all night long. But seriously, gents, in general, sweaters are going to be more casual than sports jackets. So this jacket right here is not going to be at the same level as an equally colored sports jacket. But I think that in most situations you can pull off. It's like one degree lower and it's not bad. I think that uh, a lot of people, you get style points for even trying to pull something like this off, which most people just aren't used to seeing. Now, what about layering a sweater with a jacket, with a dress shirt? I think that this is an excellent combination. The key here is going to be making sure that your sports jacket can accommodate because you don't want to be able to put all that on and not be able to button the jacket or when you button it looking like a stuffed sausage. So you got to make sure 
sure that you've got clothing that is made to do this. Again, that's why I really like sweaters that are incredibly lightweight, fit close, because they just add a little bit of a layer there. And if you've got a little bit of room in your sports jackets, which hopefully you do, boom, you'll be able to pull off that combination. And does the same apply to a suit? Yes, it does. But again, it's going to make it a little bit more casual. At the same time, I really think it's nice if you want to bring in a contrasting color, it can add pop. But I really like it when you treat it like a vest or something that's simply going to create a streamlined silhouette. So it's going to be dark in color, maybe even match the suit. And it's not going to exactly match because it's made from a different material. It's not going to have maybe the shine that you would have on a worsted wool. But yeah, I love it when you just blue, blue on blue, great combination. And what about matching with trousers? What should you wear with that combination? Well, the thing here, guys, is to think, what would you normally just wear with that shirt? What type of trousers? Is it going to be jeans? Is it ultra casual? Are you going to be dressing it up with some dress pants, some slacks, chinos? Maybe you've got a worsted wool type of slacks. You've got gray flannels. Whatever it is that you would normally wear with that dress shirt, whatever that, that Henley shirt, then that's simply what you would wear the sweater with. All that being said, moleskin corduroy. These are fabrics that a lot of guys look over. Again, gray flannel. These look so good with the sweater combination. Again, they, they have a different consistency, a different type of texture, but put them with a sweater combination. It's a solid look. Next up, what about footwear? Well, gents, that's what this video is all about. Chelsea's how to look amazing in a pair of Chelsea's. Yeah, they're going to work with a sweater. And in this video, I teach you how to style Chelsea's like an adult man. It's a great video, gents. Check it out. Solid. And it'll work right with this one. You learned a lot about sweaters. This one, you are going to learn about how to style those feet. Yeah, good one.